Okay, we're working with piecewise functions. So, question is, what is a piecewise function? Well, a piecewise function is made up of two or more of these expressions, and each of these expressions have something on the end. This is called a condition. So they're saying that I can only use x plus 2 when x values are less than but not equal to negative 3. Likewise, x minus 2 is only used when I'm picking values that are greater than or equal to negative 3. So therefore, I can only use one or the other of these expressions. So what you might be thinking is, is it possible that I, could, I would have a value and I'd have to decide which one of the two to be in, so it could be both of them? Well, the answer to that would be no, because this is a piecewise function. So a function means that for each input, there can only be one output. So therefore, if I pick an x value and, I, and it ends up being that I can either use this equation or this one or both of them, that's not going to be a function because for that single x value, I would end up getting two different y values. So I can only use one at a time. It's either going to be the first one or it's going to be the second one. And it all depends on the conditions that you have right here. So when you want to do these parts here, parts A through C, what you do is you look at the number inside the parentheses and you see which one it belongs to. So for instance, negative 4 would not belong to the bottom one because negative 4 is not larger than negative 3. Negative 4 is less than negative 3. Therefore, because it fits this statement, you are only going to put negative 4 into just the first expression only. So we put negative 4 in place of x here in the first expression. So I have negative 4 plus 2, and that's going to give negative 2. So therefore, when x is negative 4, the y value is negative 2. That's the only one we're allowed to put that in is only the first expression. Let's do the second one. f of negative 3. Now negative 3 is only included on the second one. We have an equal sign uh, on this one, which means that negative 3 is included for this. So I'm only allowed to use the second expression, x minus 2. I'll put negative 3 into that one. So I have negative 3 minus 2, that gives negative 5. So when x is negative 3, the y value is going to be negative 5. We're only using the second expression because negative 3 is only allowed for that second expression. Now let's do f of negative 3 halves. Now negative 3 halves, that's the same thing as negative 1.5. Negative 1.5 would, would not be less than negative 3. However, negative 1.5 is greater than negative 3. So because it is, we're going to put negative 3 halves into the second expression only. Negative 3 halves, and then I have minus 2. Now to do this one, we need to get some common denominators. So I'll do 2 over 2 on this one. And you're going to get negative 7 halves as a result. So when I, when I get negative 3 halves, I get negative 7 halves as a result. So now that we have those complete, let's take a look at the graph. When you do a graph, the best thing to do here is you can make uh, tables uh, for each one in this case. I'm going to make a table for the first one. I'm going to make a table for the second one. So for the first one, I'm going to make an x and a y table. And the values that you pick here, the first one you should always use no matter what is you want to use this number here that's included in the conditional statement. Now you might be saying, well, well why, why do I want to use negative 3 because it's not included? Well, we're still going to use negative 3 because that's going to define where the graph either starts or where it ends. We'll have an open circle when, I do our, when we do the graph on this one. However, it's really important. doesn't matter if there's an equal sign or not. We're still going to start with that one. So I'm going to use negative 3 right here. And I'm going to put that into here. I have negative 3 plus 2. That gives negative 1. So the first point x, y that we have is negative 3 and negative 1. That would be the first point on our graph. Now the second point we pick must be less than negative 3 because these are only for values that are less than negative 3. So the next one I'm going to use, I'm going to pick negative 4. It doesn't matter which one that you use. Um, for that one, we're just going to use uh, negative 4 because that's the next one after. Uh, and we get negative 2. So I get negative 4 and negative 2 as the next point. So let's take a look at the graph of this one. Graph I'm going to do right here. The first one is negative 3 and negative 1. Now that point, we have to have an open circle because we mentioned before 
that negative 3 is not included on the first one. We don't have an equal sign, so if it's not included, that's when you're going to use an open circle. Negative 4, negative 2 is the next point, and if we do that one, that's going to be this one right here, and in fact, it's, the line's going to keep on going down that way forever. So that's what the first graph would look like. Again, I'm putting an open circle here because that negative 3 was not included, but you see it's important that we actually still have that one on our table because this is actually telling us the end point for this particular graph or the beginning point, depending on how you're looking at it. Uh, the graph only goes up to here and stops. There's no graph that goes after this because we, we can only use values that are less than negative 3, so that's why you don't have any part of the graph that goes beyond that way. Okay, so next let's do another table for x minus 2. So again, the one that I want to start with is I always want to use the conditional statement here, that's going to be negative 3. So I'm going to put negative 3 on my table, and if I put that into the table, I get negative 5 as a result. So if I write my x and y, I get negative 3 and negative 5. Okay, so negative 3, negative 5 is the next point. Now that's going to be a closed circle because originally that negative 3 was included. There's an equal sign there. So I'm going to go over negative 3 and I'm going to go uh, down 5. If I go negative 3, negative 5, that means I get right here is where that's going to be. And again, that's going to be a closed circle there. It's included uh, because we have the equal sign. I need another point. Another point that's going to be greater than negative 3. I'll try 0. 0 is an easy one to put in. If we do that, we get negative 2. We get 0 and negative 2. 0, negative 2 would be right here. So the line is going to go like this. So again, notice that there's, there's no graph down below here because we can only use values that are greater than or equal to negative 3. So nothing's going to go down here. It is a closed circle because of the equal sign there. And it'll just keep on going out this way forever. So this that we have here, this is going to be your completed graph.